Hello, happy event planners, and welcome to the third edition of our community event, Happy Event Planner, the global community for all event professionals. I'm really excited to have you all here today. We have a super interesting topic. I think not just interesting, but super, super essential for anyone who is planning and executing events. My name is Oliver. I'm community manager and also head of marketing at Sweep. Sweep is the beautiful event platform that you are currently using to view this event. Um, really, really exciting. Before we get into the whole topic, just a very, very quick introduction to the platform. You're already on the live stream. That's fantastic. You find our goodie bag, our digital goodie bag, just um, on the left side of the platform. On the right side, you can find the chat to engage and communicate with all other participants. You can also find technical support there in case something isn't working, which we don't expect. And uh, also a few Q&A uh, possibilities, polls, and um, you can also uh, use the social wall. If you post something on your socials with the hashtag happy event profs, you will see your post um, there. So very excited about that. Um, I think we're ready to go. And I'm really, really excited to introduce my two guests for today. And I'm just going to get them on the screen for you. We have Francesca and Florian. Hello, guys. Great to have you here. Hello. Thank you so much for well for having me at least here, Oliver. Thanks for inviting, and it is great to be here with you guys today. Lovely. Oh, Florian, we can't hear you. You uh, you might have your sound still muted. How about now? What, what's Fantastic. better now? Yes. Thank Perfect. you very yeah. much. Super awesome. happy to be here. Good to see you, Francesca. <laughs> Do you want to introduce yes, yourselves to you. for a moment to our audience? Absolutely. Well, I'll go first then. Um, I'm Francesca Rodriguez. I am a marketing and web event specialist. I have been in events for quite a few years now, working mostly on the part of um, of the marketing, really, of making of making it work ahead of the event, of getting people to events, of attracting people, of preparing the delegate journeys, the attendee journeys, creating websites, social media, that awesome stuff. And I'm also a podcast host of the Events Cast, where we talk a lot about event marketing and just inspiring stories of events. And what we'll be having flow also on the show very soon um, from the back of questions will come out of this session. So that's really exciting um, to answer any questions that come up here. And yeah, I'm really excited today to be talking about that and the journeys because, well, it's one of my favorite topics. It is something I have been trying to do better myself for a lot of years now and there is just no one size fits all in attendee journeys it's all about learning as you go it's about improving every every event you do you can do it a little bit better next event with data with analytics so i'm really excited to well I'll be talking with both of you guys about this today thank you up to you florian yes and uh... I'm, I'm Florian, CEO of Sweep. Um, uh, I do event management software now for almost 10 years. And uh, I think uh, core and center of everything we do was always the attendee journey. And uh, I remember back in the days we started with all the registration process and, and send out invitation emails and all this is still core of our product. And um, I think now more I'm, I'm here to really um uh, talk about a new mindset that we have to implement in our industry like turning events into the most valuable marketing channel this is this is what i'm thriving for and but still uh, it's always getting back to the basics and you can do the best events but if you fall short on the attendee journey and don't like really focus on pre post event experience and engagement then like the best events might not be really successful. So I'm really happy to talk about that and uh, to have the expert here, Francesca. Um, so it's, uh, it will be fun. Looking forward to it. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. So um, we promised our audience a step-to-step -step guide. That's uh, what the title said. So this is exactly what the structure of our event is going to be today. You guys are going to 
follow a real attendee journey, something we've created as an example for a uh, online event or a webinar. And um, basically what's going to happen is uh, we've divided the whole structure into the six main um, statuses, attendee statuses or, or person statuses, basically. Um, and we're going to analyze the touch points for each one of these. So this is how it's going to happen. Um, before we start, though, I'm just going to pull up a little poll um, in our Q&A area. Very simple question. Where does our audience uh, see the biggest friction in the attendee journey? Is it more the parts that are before the event? Is it more the parts that are during? Or are we talking about the parts that happen after the event? Feel free to answer. Please remember you need to answer to be able to see the results. So um, while that's happening, I would say we dive into it, guys. Are you ready? I am. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, so we start with number one, uh, the researcher status. And we have one touch point here. Simple enough, perfect warm up, uh, warm up category. It's the researching phase. What do you guys have to share on that topic? Francesca, I would say we, we stick to you start first, um, and then mm -hmm. I gave my two cents. Oh. Good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, so for me, this part, I think it's so important that people don't consider it part of that indeed journey. And it really is, and especially for new people into our into our communities at this point. I think it's really a great time to really build trust with our audience, to really start by delivering a little bit of value first before asking anything from our audience. I think so many people go right into it and here a lot of people sometimes also expect that your audience are actually looking for an event but we sometimes need to understand that many times people are looking for the answer to one of their problems when they attend an event many people like today talking about this attendee journey probably when someone's asking well i want to well i have problems with my attendee journey i don't know why i'm trying to create an attendee journey or I've, i don't know how to do it better i'm trying to get more people to attend maybe the drop-up rate's very low they know they have a problem and they're looking for an answer many times that answer they don't know that the answer is going to be an event like it is here that we hope to be answering to this question today so i think really taking a step back here in this research piece and really putting more marketing around answering to that problem understanding your audience first what their problems are what their pain points are and delivering value in a different way so maybe with like lead magnets which so also at this time which you can identify those people which you don't know people out there looking for their problems looking for a solution they don't know about you yet they find the lead magnet maybe answering maybe with a five-step guide or something you did a little bit of value and then you have also identified them and you can then continue marketing to them your event you can start building trust with them you can start giving them little pieces i think just like we need to look at this part a bit different and really a first part of the journey that is not so direct with our actual event but it's their journey with us as event planners it's their journey with us as people how can we engage with them before our event then without actually without actually selling to them our event i think here's where the opportunities are to like start building a bit of trust. Well, I don't know, Flo, what, um, I think you have some other thoughts on this too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I, I love your points and uh, like Oliver called it a soft start. I think this isn't everything, but not a soft start because it is <laughs> such an important step already. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one thing that I see is even if people do all that, they do the research, they know about the problems, they know the audience, um, they do one mistake and then uh, they, they don't really concentrate on creating that hook, creating that headline that really nails it, that really gains their audience interest. And, and they don't do great copy. And I think like in every other marketing uh, department or like all other marketing activities really go down on, hey, you have to write great copy. And like Oftentimes I see event managers then trying to do the job by themselves and maybe you're not the best copywriter. So please go out, find a good copywriter, really have someone who nails it, who really is able to say it in one or two sentences and really tell you why you should attend. And then all of a sudden uh, sign up rates go up and you, you really like you, you have like a better conversion rate um, uh, within your audience. So this is one point. And the other point, and um, there's like, this is where you see it's not like 
like journey is nothing that like you control in time. It's like you have people who register. And then what I see is like you don't embrace them or you don't like emphasize them to really share that they have registered because mm -hmm. what people want is they, they don't want to make experiences lonely at home by themselves. They, they want to share that experience. And most of the time, if you see, oh, I see Francesca is joining that event. Oliver is joining in that event. Cool. I can meet them there. I will register as well. So like focus on that part as well and let people share that they have registered. And then you get this like audience, their audience involved. And then you will find other people who really want to attend, but didn't know. Um, and that's not really researching it, but it, it drives uh, attendance and it drives signups. Absolutely. I agree with the, the copy points you mentioned. I think this is something that we often underestimate in the events world, like the value of precise copy, getting to the point quickly and mm -hmm. basically presenting value within just a few words. And it's not as easy. I mean, we all know it when everyone who's created a website or written a copy that should attract people understands the issue of like being on point with just a few words. And uh, I think the more emphasis we put on that, the faster we're going to really convert uh, people with, in a frictionless way. So we're not going to lose them already due to a huge block of text and they're already annoyed and don't want to sign up just because they have to read so much. Time is valuable in the event world, as we know. So um, I fully agree on that one, Floor. Lovely. Do we have anything more to add, add to the research phase, or are we jumping one step further? Let's take the next step. Let's take it. Let's take the next step. Amazing. <laughs> Here we go. So our researching potential attendee um, has now become a contact. They're in our database, and we have two very important and essential touch points here. And I know, Floor, one of them is something you can really say a lot about, so looking forward to that. Uh, we're in the contact phase, and we're going to speak about invitations and reminders. Francesca, Mike's with you. Invitation. This is my biggest fight of all time, Nog. Invitation. Everyone usually sends out the same invitation to everyone. And for me, that's the biggest mistake there is out there. We are talking so much now about, about personalization, about really getting to know your audience and everything, but why do we just invite everyone in the same way? We need to understand that everyone is not the same on our database. And this can be for various reasons. Okay, we probably have in our database a first clear segment that is someone new, so someone we've just got from this research period, and there are people that have been to our events before. There are people that, or that know us before or have been to other activities we've organized or have engaged with us in different ways. And they're not the same. Reality is they are not the same. If you're, especially if you're organizing like big flagship events and you've been running it for years and you've got someone that's been coming to your event year after year after year, and they get an invitation as they were someone brand new to your audience. How does that make them feel? How does it make them feel being talked to exactly the same than someone that has just met you five minutes ago? And this is like my biggest mistake that I see a lot of people doing all the time that is just talking to their audience in the same way. So for me, the biggest thing on invitation is really picking your list and understanding who is on your list, looking into it in pieces and dividing it, segmenting into it in a way which you can talk to people differently. So this is going to look different for a lot of people. So, so many people that work like this new versus returning attendees. And I think that's one of the most important splits for me. You know, can you maybe talk to people there, firstly different, because also they need a different, they need different information. Someone that has come to your event, they know you about your event, so you need to tell them less information about your event. But someone that is new doesn't know anything, so they need more. But then also are there, do you know, for example, their interests? Have they, so like if we, like we were talking about before, maybe they have come onto our database because they've downloaded different pieces of different lead magnets or different pieces of information, or they've come through different ways. If you have, for example, three to four to five different topical lead magnets, you suddenly know that they're maybe more interested in this topic or in that topic. So can you maybe send an invitation focused on that? Is your event focused in talking about all these different points? Well, what can you sell to them that is interesting for them? So for me, it's all the invitation is all about looking in in detail to your to the people on your database and saying, what do they need to convince what do I need to give them to convince them to come to my event? Or what do they, what is their reason for attending my event? Because not everyone will attend your event for the same reasons. 
they will be people coming to your event because they are coming to learn. There are people coming to your event because they're coming to network. There are people coming to your event because there's so many different reasons. So there are there are pieces of information you don't you're not going to know. But if you do know it, why not talk to them based on that? If you know that they're interested in this topic, saying, "Hey, I can help you with this." So for me, an invitation it's all about segmenting it, taking it down to pieces, and giving your audience the right message to convince them to come to to your event basically i said that in a very very long way <laughs> you, you did you did perfect you said it perfectly for and I, I, to be honest there's nothing to add there that is really more value than that would you say i would i would say what you just said is like you have to personalize the journey and there is no one fits it all right like you have that one event that is good but you have different people on your contact list. So treat them differently. Use the information that you have. Maybe you have data in your database that tells you something about their attendance in earlier events. They tell you something mm -hmm. about the, the eBooks that they have downloaded. Use that information and then you know where are they. If you're talking in funnel, flywheel, whatever, yeah, you know where they are and then like specify your messaging and then like create this personalized experience. Personalization is not just putting the first and last name on top of the email. That's not personalization. So well done. And I think this is like the perfect step to remind us because this is what we're talking about. Oliver, you know, I go, I go crazy with that, when, with that experience all the time. <laughs> Absolutely, Flo. Uh, before we go to the reminders, there's one question from me to you, Francesca. What do we do with the attendees in our database that receive our invitations again and again and again? Uh, we know they're not unsubscribing from the emails. That means we're not annoying them. There might be something interesting for them, uh, but they do not convert to, to um, attendees even after four or five emails. How can we handle the specific target group? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the first thing I would look at doing with that is doing, I'm a big fan of A-B testing. I will A-B test everything if I, if I could. Literally in my life, if I could walk around A-B testing things, I would be doing that. And I think, especially in email invitations, it is so easy and so important to A-B test things. So if you're selling, so maybe, yeah, you've sent people five invitations. You see they're, like you said, you see they're opening it, they're reading it. Are they clicking on the buttons? I would look a bit more first into a bit of that data. Okay, they're not unsubscribing, but are they actually engaging? Are they are they clicking on the buttons? Are they going to look at your event website? Okay, if they are, you've got a question there of like, okay, they are actually interested. They are actually going to my website. They are actually looking at it, but they're not converting. So there might be something else wrong on the rest of part of your journey, on your event site, on your copy, like Flo was saying before, there is something else wrong. So then you probably need to look a bit more into detail down the line of what is going wrong down the journey. If they're just opening the emails, reading it, not click on any buttons, I think there's probably then something going wrong actually in the email. Well, they might not be going wrong. You know, it might just be that it's not their interest. They, someone can be registered, subscribe to your email list. They're, they like receiving your emails, but there's not, it, it's just not for them that event and if they've not unsubscribed well, it's fine but i mean i'd probably start by testing some a b testing basically mm -hmm. start by putting out a few different messages to them try out different different call to actions different copy different trying to sell if you're trying to sell all the content of your event saying oh these are the great speakers i have try by telling the theaters of the networking or the engagement sessions try to try to identify what we we're talking there before what's gonna sell them my event try to find out what that is basically mm -hmm. try to different messaging don't just keep doing the same again and again and again and i mean if it if you're still if not getting a lot of results from your ob testing well try actually a different step and reach out to them and, and and ask them clearly like hey are you still interested in my in my events are you actually is this something interesting for you or can i be delivering something different Maybe the case is, yes, I, I, it's really interesting. I just can't make any of the dates you're putting out there, which you might then question, hey, is there something different I can do when organizing my events? Mm -hmm. Or they might say, you know, just reach out. I think really communicating with your audience is really important as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Francesca. Florian, remind us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go for it. And um, I think this is something that you will hear a lot when we talk about other points in the journey for me. But um, 
please use the data that you already generated. So if I have registered for your event, please stop send out reminders to register to all the people who already have, right? This is so stupid to do because this feels like spam. Yeah, and this is like, this is what I see is, they, they change the copy, but it's still the same call to action is don't miss the event, register, 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 different call to actions, but all lead to, hey, please be an attendee. And this is not how a reminder should work. I have registered. So if you want to make sure I don't forget that I have registered, okay, that's a case. Then send a specific reminder for me that, hey, you have registered already. This is how I can add value. Don't forget, this is the date. This is where you should have it in your calendar. Have you already checked that you have it in your calendar? Do that stuff, but not try to send out reminders to the whole contact list. Mm. So you have to really look into the attendee status. Where are they in the journey? And if they have already registered, send different reminders, please. And in this case, I think it's all about using the right tools that actually give you the possibilities to segment and to categorize your, your, yes. your guest list, basically, and make sure that these errors don't happen. And uh, yeah, it's all about the right tool in this case, right? 100%. I mean, we were concentrating so much on, on this part of our software to really make sure that like, you can send out like, different emails and really segment, to, uh, segment your contact list and then like, bring it down to, the, to, to even the one information that is, that is necessary and really separate them on basis on, on, on specific guest information and not only on like, okay, who has already received the email and who hasn't. So that's absolutely. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Okay, guys, moving on. So our contact has now magically become a registered, a status registered. We've done everything right. Marketing has gone perfectly. Uh, registration page, confirmation email, and pre-event communication are our touch points here. Francesco, registration pages. I know this is your very, very favorite topic, as Flo already mentioned. Please share your knowledge with us. Registration pages, yes. I mean, this is where it's you've, you've worked really hard up until this point. This is the moment of reality. What are people are going to do now? They're going to register or they're going to leave. So here is really where you need to be putting all your resources, not all, but a great part of your resources in. So I think like what Flo was saying before of that copy, that copy needs to be here front and line. Like mm. you really need to be getting your message in right at this moment. You need to be talking the right words, really, really to convince your audience here. I mean, registration for me, registration, the most important part is making it easy, making it the easiest possible. I can't tell you how many massive registration forms I see, painless, painful registration forms. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we've, I think we've all been there. We all, you all start doing a form and you like, I can't be bothered in this or doing to do this now. And the worst of all is when people ask for questions on the registration, which they might not have the answers to here. So if you're asking, if you're, for example, going out looking for business, um, people of a certain rank and they, you asking them, well, how much does your company invoice this year? Or how many people on the team are there? Or there's all these questions, which I might not have the information to answer to right now. So I'm going to have to go and, or just put random information, which is of no use to you as an event planner, or I'm going to have to go and ask someone of my team these questions. Why, why, what's, what is that going to change for me right now? Why is that going to make it different for my event? So for me, the actual registration form is about taking all those questions what are totally unnecessary out of them and making it the easiest as possible. If you, if I'm already in your database and you're already sending me emails saying, hi, Francesca, come to the event. Why do you need my, my name again? Okay. You probably might need my email to match my registration about that, but why do you, do you need my name again? You've already got that. Why do you need to do these questions that are not relevant to actually get me there on the day? So for me, the first thing of that, so you've got your messaging right on your registration page, then your form needs to be easy, needs to be seamless, needs to be one click if you can make it. There's a lot of, te there's a lot of text out there now that actually even allow you one clicks or just get the information from your LinkedIn. So if you've got the potential to integrate it with any of those texts, that is awesome. But if not, just do the bare minimum. What do you need from your attendee to register? And the rest of the information, you can get it down the line. You can contact, if you do your rest of your journey in a, in, in a correct way, you can ask them more information down the line. Hey, I would like to get to know you more flow. Can you answer to me these five questions? But, but do you, do I need to know 
exactly where did you study and for how many years or you know do i need to do this massive long form so for yeah. me that's really one of the most important parts of that registration page my other one especially for in-person events especially for paid events is really having an FAQ on your registration page, an FAQ on which you answer the questions your audience can have in that moment. I think this is especially important if anyone, if you're asking for anyone to pay for you for a ticket. Because if I'm asking you to come to a person event and pay £150 um, to come to an event, and you are not sure if you're actually 100% going to make it, you want what you're questioning about the cancellation policy, the refund policy, if you want to give that ticket to another colleague if you needed to, if you need to change any information, we're all online consumers practically nowadays. When you have a question just about when you're about to buy something online, if you can't find the answer to it, what do you do? You probably leave. You say, well, well, you probably go around looking for the question and you probably go a bit mad because you really want to buy that product and you want, but you're not going to buy it without knowing this answer. You go look for it. If you can't find it, you decide not to buy it. And that happens all the time with events. It happens all the time. Someone's about to give you their money. They've got the card there and they suddenly think, what happens if I can't make it? What happens, and especially nowadays with all the change, what happens if for any reason I can't get to the event? And if they, if you're not going to answer them there, right there, you don't need to ask them to send you an email. You don't need to ask them to go five pages down the line. Put all those questions right next to your registration. So it's very difficult to answer this question in a very quick way because there is so much I would love to say that you need to put on this registration page because, like I said, it is one of my favorite things. But really being clear with the messaging, having the right copy on that, that thing, telling what people are going to get out of the event, mm -hmm. some clear bullet point list saying, this is what you're going to learn. This is what's included. This is what you're going to get out of it. Easy registration, answering to all the questions people may have in that moment and just making it seamless, just making it easy for people. Flo, I'm not sure if you have any additions to that. <laughs> Well, two, two things, two things came to my mind and you already covered one. This is use the data again. Like why not having a pre-filled form with all the data that you already have, right? Mm -hmm. So use that, right? And once again, a registration page for an event is not a lead capture tool. I can't say that often enough. It's not for lead qualification. It's not for capturing leads. Right. It's to like really make make it easy to sign up for an event. Right. And uh, I think people mix that up all the time. Yeah. And the second thing is uh, one of the worst experience. It's a free event. Don't make it a checkout process, please. Don't make me buy zero dollar tickets and like fill out the billing address or something like that just because the tool you use forces you to have this kind of e-commerce checkout process this is not how you do registration and events um yeah the rest uh, you said it perfectly um focus on adding value and answer questions that's the point fully agreed guys you just said that after it's like the tick, the process, the ticket process. I think that's really important to actually look for the right checkout process. There's so many, Ooh. there's so many registration ticketing systems out there and you, and there's one for everyone, but they're all not the same and your events not the same. So I think really investing a bit of time and effort and really finding the right one for you. That is so important. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I interrupted <laughs> you there. <laughs> all good. All good. So we move on to confirmation emails. So uh, the participant has registered. They are officially status registered. They receive a confirmation email. What happens next or what has to happen in this step touch point? So for me, they need to receive an, a confirmation email. There's no doubt about it. And I can't tell you how many events I register to and I don't receive a confirmation email. And for me, this is more like one of the worst things you can do. I think before thinking of anything, you need to think about this confirmation email before thinking about the invitation email, you need to think when I get someone to register, how am I going to confirm their place? Because if you, when, when you register for a ticket, like I do it all the time, I register for a ticket. The first thing I do is go to my inbox to make sure that my pro my ticket and process, my form has gone through. And if I don't receive it, I'm there sitting like, Hey, has it gone through? Am I registered? Do I need to register again? Do I need to, especially if it's paid, especially if there's money involved. So I think there's a hundred percent needs to be a, there's no doubt about it. There needs to be a confirmation email. And then 
I think there's various things that need to be in that confirmation email, like every single detail about the event, not every single detail of small detail, but every single detail your audience will need before the event. So when is your event? Where is it? Um, what time it is, how they're going to get there. If it's in person, how they assess it. If it's a virtual one plus contact information, plus if you need anything ahead of time, this is what, this is where you can contact me at. This is where you can ask any questions and letting them know, like we were saying before, what to expect from you saying to them, Hey, this is the information. If it's especially of an in-person one, this is like, okay, this is where the venue is going to be. This is the thing I will be sending you more travel details ahead of time. I will be sending you more information about this to keep them kind of nice, letting them know what is to come after this moment, letting them know what to expect from you from now to the day of the event. I think that's really important. And then really, I think it's really important to get them to find this email and see this email. And for that, I think it's really important that in your thank you email on the checkout page, we were talking about before, you have a really nice displayed message. So when you complete that thing, you'll probably redirect it to a confirmation page or you get a confirmation message on, on the site mm -hmm. saying, Hey, you are fantastic. You are awesome. You've just done an awesome thing by registering to my event, really starting the journey. The journey starts in this exact, well, it's already started before, but their real excitement starts really now saying, yes, you've made it. You've registered now go to your inbox, go to your inbox and find this email, which I have just sent to you. I've sent it to you from this email and in, and go and find it because this is not just going to improve their experience. It's not just telling them what to do, but at the same time, if you've ever done any email marketing, you're probably fighting with spam. You probably have done this fighting of getting the, in, getting this email in their inbox. Yeah. And this is your most important email to actually make sure your the rest of your emails were going to come, which we're going to continue talking about, get into their inbox because more in, more emails they don't open the more likely you are going to be tagged as spam so getting them actually to open that first email they get from you if you've got a button in there even better to like reconfirm their their place or something so maybe if you're giving them a freebie so maybe like get them really excited like hey i've just sent you an email thank you so much for registering i've just sent you this confirmation email and you've actually got this additional freebie in there go in there you've got a button they can click on it and that way you're actually really making sure that they've received that email that's in their inbox. And you're also telling them, Hey, if you can't see in your inbox, go look in your spam, go look in your promotion emails. Cause this is the only chance you get to tell them that because when you remind them down the, down the line, you, you can't say to them, Hey, I'm sending you reminders, make sure you're receiving them, make sure if they're in spam, you're finding them. So this is the only time you can actually tell them. So I think it's so important that. I know you, Flo, have a few things that you think are important to put in the email. <laughs> uh, yes, for, for me, like the, the confirmation email is something like the navigation map to your event. Like this is this is what it is, and you want people to somehow pin it, make it a favorite in their inbox, and really this is where they navigate to if they had at the day of the, of the event or the day before if they have a question. I, how, how was it? What time was it? Where is it again? Where do I find the location? This is where they go. They don't go back to the registration page. They, they search their inbox for that registration. page. So focus on the relevant information that helps them to navigate to your like door, to the front door of your event, right? And like provide them the information that they need uh, to get there without like with, with the less friction as possible, right? Um, give them tips to, hey, you shouldn't take the underground take the bus right these are like the valuable information if you know the place if you know hey this going there by train is really not a great experience but because you end up at the main train station where like it's not a nice place give them up give them like guidance to the best experience to get to your event right and then skip all the data that they already have you don't have to include like i see that most of the time is like you have this placeholders and the placeholders are you're registered, your name and last name, your company name, right? And this is like useless information. This is something I do know, hopefully, right? So this is, doesn't need to be like in center of the, of the confirmation base. So really focus on what could be a question that a attendee might have when he wants to arrive at my location. Mm -hmm. And if it's a virtual venue, go into the virtual details, technical details, browsers set up, all that stuff could go into um a confirmation mail or 
you add another touch point to your uh, journey and then you have the specific email for that. But um, most of the time it's a confirmation mail. Time flies when you're having fun, guys. I'm going to move <laughs> on to the next uh, point. Pre-event communication. So what happens before the attendee actually joins us? Where, what touch points do we have and how can we make uh, the journey more exciting for the attendee at this point? Mm -hmm. So I think like, again, like here, we really need to map out really everything. Think of every single thing your the person that's just registered needs to know into the day of your event. Mm -hmm. Think of everything involved in it. And really, if you take a time and think of anything that's small or stupid that you may think that that is not important enough to put in your email put it in there anyway and i think like really try to get help of this from other people because it's very hard to sometimes know what to not know what you already know basically so you might have already gone to the venue you have already been there so you know how to get there so sometimes it's difficult to explain the process if you've already, if you already know it so i think really like try to talk with a couple of people and ask them what would there be what would their questions be ahead of the event when they've just registered what would their questions be from now to day of the event so it might be yeah like how to get there what they need to bring what they need to do it before time if they need to give you any information, any dietary information, if they have any um, any accessibility needs, how can they inform you about that? Think of all these questions they may have at a time, all, all the information they may need, draw it all down, and then create a journey out of it. You can't just give that all into one. You can't just then give them an email like, here's everything. You need to draw that in the right time. So also it depends your event, like for example, this type of event, um, it's one that you organize a lot more, you know, we what you put registration out one, two weeks ahead of time. You don't really need travel information. It's different. Every type of event's gonna be different, but an event that you sell, say six months out, a flagship, a big flagship conference, which you said six months out. Well, to be honest, your attendee doesn't need to know the details of the of the um, tra their travel details five months out because they're not organizing the travel. Maybe at that point they're organizing the hotel stay. Maybe they're organizing other areas around your event. But I think here it's really like once you have your list of every single thing they will need to know, you need to put a time frame around it. You need to say, when are they going to be thinking about travel? OK, if they're coming from abroad, they might be thinking about their travel months in ahead because they need to book flights. So that may be, but that's not going to come to everyone. So if you are asking, for example, their information of where they're based, then you know that someone's based in the same country that you are, well, you can give them information of how to get there. If you're asking for people their location, you can give them details of how to get from their location to you. So here I really think of you're coming back to getting to know your audience, what they are going to need and at what time they're going to need it. Because I think that what time is really important. And I think here also you have a great advantage to allow your audience to help you shape your event, to help you to help have a say in your event, to help them decide what their journey is going to be with you. Because we all don't have the same needs. We all don't need the same things. We also don't want to hear from event planners the same amount. Some of us need a lot of reminders. Some of us need less. So I think here is just also opening yourself and saying to your audience, come and contact me. Come and tell me what you need. Come and, and asking questions and starting the engagement ahead of time and really saying to them, hey, we're deciding if we're going to put on this decoration wall, this or this. What do you think? What would you like to see? Or we're trying to decide between this menu and this menu for the thing what food would you like to eat because here you're not just allowing them to shape your events so what's going to make them feel a bit more special but you're getting them to engage with you you're getting them to answer to your questions which is going to help the engagement whole piece what's going to come later on in the journey actually at the day of the event so there's so much to do here i think yeah plan ahead of time think of everything every question they might have think of the time they're going to have it and think of how you can contact how you can get in contact with them ahead of time how you can allow them to contact you and how you can start engagement really. Yeah. And I, I think uh, like the biggest mistake that event partners can do is like using or using pre-event communication only for two things, remind people to attend and then promote their stuff. Mm -hmm. Like this is not how you do it. It's like include your audience, like really why not starting 
networking before the event why not invite them to a slack channel before the event and try to connect with people you have data you have information you could add value with that instead of using it for your own purposes try to use it to add value to your audience and then really again like not one thing fits at all here like really look who needs what information who might be interested in shaping the event maybe not everybody is like that but you you, you have the the people who really want to engage before the event and then like why not emphasize it why not like create more, multiple touch points not only email like bring them together in a community group bring them in a slack channel in a facebook group wherever your audience hangs out use those channels and do really pre event engagement and generate data that you can use at your event right it's not a promotion phase like only for the people who haven't registered yet for the other ones you don't you, you don't need to promote your event and they already signed up absolutely fantastic guys um the moment has come we've reached the event day it's happening um your contact has become a attendee and he joins our events we have six touch points here Considering the amount of time we have left, we might need to speed through a few of them. Just a little heads up here. Um, Francesca, what can we do regarding the attendee journey when the actual event has started? So I'm going to take this. I know Flo is much more experienced in virtual events than I am. So I'm going to let him talk from a virtual point of view. And I'm going to talk of it from the person point of view here, if that's okay with you, Flo. I'm going to say that like this fair. first touch point that you have there, joined event. Um, I think here you really need to start the really start the journey, the experience on the right foot, and really give them the information they need. I can't tell you how many times I go to events in a checkout, and you've got someone just scanning a badge there, or no one, and you just arrive and you have to scan your own badge, or you have to find your ticket, and you walk in the door, and suddenly you've got left, right, stairs up. Where do I go? And there's no one to explain it. There's no one with a massive smile there saying welcome to my fantastic event i'm i'm really glad that you could join us thanks so much for battling or in all the tubes and coming here or getting a flight or whatever you had to do to come here today thank you for doing that now you're going to do this now you're gonna go up the stairs go right and go and get yourself a coffee because we all need to be taken by the hand step by step and that's the reality when you come to an event you don't want to be there trying to work out what you have to do next so i think like at that first point really i think the check check-in is so important the check-in is so important to have a couple of people there really smiley really happy really welcoming to your event and preparing people to what to do okay you're at this time the event starts in 10 minutes so you've got coffee on the left side here at the door go get yourself a lovely coffee then head to the main room or the trade show the exhibition hall is down there we're going to do an hour first of demos go down the hall then you know just tell people what to expect tell people what to do and i think that's so important to the event really welcoming and along the actual rest of the event it's too like in the breaks in the sessions in the um lunch everything just have people around your event have people standing communicating don't just be just don't hide behind now that you've organized this fantastic event you've got people to come there don't just hide just have people available for your audience, have people available to ask it and let your people know, let your audience know. If you have any questions, if you need any help, go look for someone with the green t-shirts. They're there to help you, you can ask them for anything. And because there might be someone walking down the halls looking for the bar rooms, they can't find it, you know, and and that all those small little things are things that build into the experience. Someone may be looking for water, they can't find it. Just be available for your people on the day of the event, be available to support them how they need. That is my intake on the day of the event, really. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely love it. And I, I mean, to be honest, I think this this during the event journey is like a whole topic for like two events, maybe or three events. We could talk about that forever. So um, for the virtual part, I would say uh, we talk about frictionless journey. It's really about one thing, not make me register again, please again like how often times i register i sign up for an event i click on the link and then fill out your profile seriously okay maybe add a photo would be nice for networking purposes okay but another form please no right this is not what you want to do 
And the other part, like most of it in virtual goes into technical problems, to be honest, right? Okay, have a tutorial on how to navigate, show people around one thing you can do. But the other thing is have a dedicated communication channel that only helps people struggling with technical issues. Don't use the general chat for this. Have a look into it. Have someone dedicated who just like looks into the chat and really scans for people who like post something like, oh, is the stream lagging? I can like log in. I don't find the session where, whatever question. Have someone in the team who's only dedicated to look into the chat and look for those messages, but offer like a complete other channel, like a WhatsApp channel, whatever, a Slack channel again, email address, a Zoom call in parallel where people just can log in and ask questions to the IT team. But make it super easy to fix the technical problem if possible. We all know that not every issue can be fixed during an event. Things like that happen, but then you can, you have to personalize the conversation here. You can like, say, I'm sorry, nobody can log in with the Safari browser. If you have those issues, tell them before, please. Don't make them come to the event and then experience like, oh, I need to download a new browser to use that and to, to really participate in the event. That's like the shittiest experience you can have. So Great, it's, in virtual, it's about fixing technical issues and then yeah. all the engagement part, let's have a different event about that. <laughs> Greeting at this point to our colleagues, Jonas and Matthias in the other room who are Hopefully not fixing any technical issues because there aren't any. <laughs> um, <laughs> anything else to add on this point, guys? Otherwise, we are already in the... Running out of time. <laughs> well, running out of time, plus entering the very exciting post-event phase. So we've had a successful event. Hopefully, everything went well. All our participants are happy. And what happens next? How do we keep the participants engaged and excited after the event? And how do we get them to um, either join our community, register for the next event, or do both? Yeah. So I think this is obviously like this part of the event is becoming a bit more popular now with also the virtual and like thanks the last two years, it has become a lot more popular. And thank God to that, because like before, um, it was just an event's over and very few people were talking about this word community and i'm so glad that it has started because it's an awesome thing and i think especially there's so much missed opportunity after an event there still is and it's just starting now but there is so many still missed opportunities after an event i've got you to come to my event i've got you to register i've got you for all this process which we've been dragging everyone along today on we've got you here what what next what next what's next for you and for me you know what next for for me as an event planner, how can I continue this journey along with you? How can am I organizing more events? Have I got a community? Have I got a product to sell? How, how can it be beneficial for me, but how can it be beneficial for them? And when you bring those two things together and really think about that, awesome things can happen. And I think here is a lot, I mean, everything we talk about events, there's no one size fits all. And we've been saying that all the time, but I think here you really do need to think about those two things. Like what have I got to continue offering and what do they continue wanting? And then put those two pieces together and continue and offering it around. So if I have more events, you know, organized or scheduled, or even I might not have a fixed date for even a venue or something, I can continue letting you know about those right then and then. I think the most important is not forgetting about your audience the day after your event. And the first thing with that is that thank you email. That thank you email in which I really say, Oliver, you are awesome. Thanks so much for coming to my event. Thank you for coming to my event. Now, what are you going to do now? Now, okay, for you, well, you can go and get the on-demand sessions from here. You can go and connect with your speakers from here. If you met anyone that was really cool that you want to connect with them, here is where you can find them. Here is where you can find you know, this was the hashtag. If you want to see what other people are saying during the day, here's all this, you know, really giving inform continuing the conversation there, giving information for you. And then also letting them know this is what to expect from me. So for example, if you're doing a survey, which I think is really important and you should do a survey after every event, a feedback survey, you need to think of what information, what questions you want to ask, what, um, what information you want to know. It's not just about asking random questions. It's about saying, how do I want to improve my events? or what information do I need to ask you? And letting you know in that thank you email. Hey, Oliver, if it's all right with you, I'm going to send you a survey form. 
because I'm going to send you this form because it's really important for me to understand my experience with you, you know, your experience with me. I, I want to understand how my event was for you and I want to improve. And being just really honest and transparent in this area here and asking for real feedback from people. But yeah, letting them know, I'm going to send that to you tomorrow if that's all right. And next week, I'm going to send you the link to my community or I'm going to send you an invite for another event. And just like keeping that conversation going. So yeah, like um, being aware. So first of all, not forgetting about them after the event, sending, I mean, and a thank you email, it can be really simple. Like if you're running an in-person event, a free day in-person event, which you're exhausted, you can't be there sending manual emails out after or late at night, schedule them ahead of time, schedule a couple of thank you emails, schedule a really basic one, right? At the end of the evening, you know, just saying, hey, thanks for coming to my event. Tomorrow, look out, I've got an email with all this great content for you and with a survey question. And then doing this journey. And obviously, if you have a community in that event, you have something for them to continue talking with your speakers, with your sponsors, with other attendees. That is really where you want to be. That is where you are aiming to be and where you should be looking at going really as an event planner. That is the end journey, the perfect end journey, because it's just that way it never finishes. That way, once you start getting people in your community, then really that's where the start for your next events are. So maybe in the future, we would look at this journey and the start point wouldn't be research, it would be community. And it's just a constant loop going around and around and you've been in a community of your people, which they are coming to your events and back and continue learning. I mean, that's really where I see the future of it going really, or where I would love it to be. Obviously we're not really there yet, but I think starting to have a community and allowing your people to continue talking in the way they want, if they want to continue networking, they can, if they want to continue consuming content, they can. And I mean, especially if you have sponsors involved, this is so beneficial for them. You can actually keep delivering ROI way after the event. You can continue that journey with them. Um, but yeah, there's so much you could do after event really. There's so much. Absolutely. And, um, what another topic that we could talk about like for days now, um, but for me, like two things are really relevant here. If you're talking about post event engagement, post event experiences, I call that the event value gap. And this is where like mm -hmm. event planners, marketing teams lose at least 50% of their return of invest of investment. If they don't get the conversation going, right? Like I know event planners are like, this is such a busy job and you plan one event, you finish one event and then your head goes right into the next event. You plan the next event, you have all this stuff to do. But if you not following up, if you're not like really go into building a long lasting relationship, right? You will end up in like, like only have three hours to three days to deliver value. And if you don't during the event, like people are done with you. Like I, I don't come back if I don't receive the value. And no other business does business like that, right? No other business does the business like that. They all like try to add value in every single day to your audience. And this is like the mindset shift that I was talking about. Like, okay, events is not this one-time experience. Events should be like part of an experience, but as an ongoing experience, 365 days a year. Um, and like most of the time people ask, but how do I do that? Like, okay, thank you, email, survey, fine, done, already done that. But like, there's so much more that you can do. I mean, this whole content that you just generated with your event, you have answers on Q and A's, you have a recording, you have a fantastic speaker who like put so much value and so much knowledge uh, um, out there. You can use that content and then like, do separate and how do you say it? I just forgot. You have to use that content to really distribute it in different channels, put it out there, and then keep the engagement going based on that content, right? So Francesca now has like a lot of things to talk about in their in her podcast. So why not inviting the guest to listen to that specific podcast? episode that talks about like or goes deeper into how to build a, re a registration page right and um, what you can do is um, you can use 
the, 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 the data that you generated in your event in terms of where was the most engagement, what were, where were the people, what are the sessions that they, um, uh, that they were engaging the most with. Use that session, ask the speaker if he could do a follow-up session, 15 minutes in a Slack channel, Q&A, ask me anything, right? But like, don't stop with the event, use the content and then keep the conversation going, try to add value. And then it's not about selling something to people, right? Don't do that. It's not like in 90% of the time, attendance to an event tells you nothing about buying intent, right? Like there might be some events that are talking about the product and your service and you like have a conversation about what you are delivering okay, then you might have some information about buying intent. But most of the events, you don't have that. So don't put them on a sales cadence and hand them over to sales as qualified leads and then say, okay, I keep the conversation going um, only uh, based on my sales journey. That's my take. <laughs> Fantastic, guys. Um, I have a feeling we could go on forever with this, right? This, oh, is, <laughs> this is amazing. I'm so... I, this is so I much feel like we was way too ambitious to do a whole journey in one session. Cause like, I think each of the pieces that you put out there could have a whole session on by itself, each, well, each of them. We've got our next six events planned out then. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've reached the last step now. And this is what you mentioned before, Francesca, a topic that's not being spoken about enough yet, but uh, which is definitely becoming more and more prominent in the business world. Um, and it's the topic of community. So. Uh, we have a community, as most of our attendees will know, and uh, our community members who have joined definitely do. It's the Happy Event Man com uh, Manager community. Um, what happens when actually the attendee and uh, after the post-event phase decides to then join the community? In very briefly, what's because again, this could be a whole a whole session by itself. Um, what uh, uh, what touch points do we have in the community, and how can we just keep uh, the car rolling during that time? Mm. I'm familiar from a community area. I think it's really going back to what we were saying right at the beginning of understanding your audience and understanding why this community assists really i think now especially it's a great thing in the last few years that it started to be talked about more but at the same time they're starting to disappear everywhere and just with without really purposes really so i think really before starting a community it's really thinking about what is the aim of this community who is this community for and and understanding the process going to have you know i think there's a lot of different communities with a lot of different theaters, a lot of different benefits. So it's really understanding it and then really explaining that to your audience ahead of time. Again, it's like what we were talking about the moment someone arrives to your event and you're saying to them, hey, now you're going to go and do this. I think the first moment when someone arrives in your community, you need to be welcoming them just like you do at your event. You need to be saying, welcome to this community. This community's aim is this. This community is for these type of people. Because that's also like a lot of people just expect any, you know, they open the doors too wide. They open it to everyone. And communities don't work like that. Community is a group of people who or think the same or want the same things or are, you know, they, they need to have something in common. So you need to be saying this community, welcome to this community. This community is for this purpose. It's for these people. And this is what we do in here. So now, if you have, a, for example, an introduction area, you know, introduction chat or introduction forum, or I mean, it could be hosted, communities could be hosted on so many different areas. They could just be as simple as a Facebook group, you know, or a Slack channel or an actual community built on a whole website um, with different forums and different chats. But really, they all need to have then broke up sessions and really where you're telling people, this is how you can make the most out of your community. This is where you can go to introduce yourself and we encourage you to introduce yourself. This is where you go and find this, this, and this, this is what you're going to do. But most important in a community, I think is a specific role. There's a community manager and you need that community manager in a community. You need someone tying the pieces together, at least until your community gets off for the third, you know, afterwards, once your community is going, once you have an, enough, Re members that really know you and know the community, they will just take it and they will build this community. Once you have the audience to actually know it and been in long enough, but especially when you start, you need someone that is saying that when someone joins, for example, and sees that someone's joined and they haven't introduced themselves two days later, they can say, Hey, Francesca, 
welcome to the community or saying every week, hey, this week we have five new members, we have 10 new members, welcome everyone, please tell us words about yourself or let's keep an eye out on the Q&A chats. You maybe have a group where people are asking questions. If no one's answering to those questions, your community is worth nothing. So you need a community man manager knowing, well, being able to answer or knowing they need to know who is in the community. So if someone asks one question, they can say, hey, great question, Francesca. Look, this other person in the community is an expert in this. They maybe they have an answer. So you need someone that is doing that first initial bit. And then hopefully then it will, you know, your community will take off and it will, you know, be able to run more on itself. It will never run on itself. You always need a community manager. But I think it's really, yeah, like I said, welcoming people, preparing them, giving them the information they need and really managing it. It's not going to manage itself. That's for me, for our community. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I, uh, th this session is not about community. What I would say is not every attendee is a good fit for your community. Keep that in mm -hmm. mind. So it's, it's, it's not about invite everyone to your community. This is what Francesca was just saying. There is, there's a reason why you have the community. There's a perfect fit for a community member. And if the attendee isn't a perfect fit, then you might get any value out of the community. So. This is the first thing I would consider. The other thing is um, if you want to connect the community to the event, like be prepared to have like a conversation going already in the community that is somehow connected to the topic to your event, right? And um, then like this is a good starting point. You invite people and maybe you have like like the sub channel in your community that is talking exactly about the topic that you were just talking about during your event and then you start like you, you you start to generate like member created content around the topic so i would love to hear what our audience is telling me about or telling us about the mm -hmm. uh, their attendee journeys and their friction points and what they think is working well and not working well and if the event is not the space to like listen to the people or to 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 have this conversation in detail um, then the community is a perfect place but again like the community is nothing where you like where the purpose is you get more information from the people it's a place where you give 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 and you like what you get back is over time like feedback and knowledge about your audience and and, and what's really interesting for your community members um so this is something that people might mix up um and uh yeah if you if you want to go into the community thing then make sure that you get community right before you do that and then connect community, connect your community to the event topic and have a specific channel or whatever that's talking about the topic because otherwise it's kind of this, hmm, where's my entrance point? And Francesca said it well, if, you, if, you are, if you're kind of lost, like in the venue, you enter the venue and you're kind of lost and then it's like you lose the, all the engagement right at the doorstep. Lovely closing words, Florian. Thank you very much. This might be the perfect moment for me to add. If you want to join our Happy Events <laughs> Planner community, there is a banner under the live stream. Just click it. Um, please, we are very happy to welcome you in our uh, global event community. And um, this is also where the Q&A session is going to happen. We have a few Q&A questions, but we are also um, at the end of our show. So I would suggest we just move this into our Slack community. And um, I'm sure Francesca, Florian, and all the other event professionals will be happy to give their opinion on the two, three uh, questions we had in the Q&A. Um, guys, this has well, been... I suggest if, if people are like, not able to join the Slack community right now, if you have a specific question, feel free to reach out, send me a DM on LinkedIn. I think, I, I'm sure Francesca will do the same. Just ask the question there. I will make sure that I answer it today, latest tomorrow, so that you get your answer right away, so you don't have to use Slack. But I would be happy to see you there in a second. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, would have been my next. Uh, would have been my next point. Follow these guys on LinkedIn. Both Francesca and Florian are doing a fantastic job. They're sharing really, really valuable content and opinions there. So um, the links will be sent out in the thank you email, uh, which will follow after the event. So um, guys, this has been really, really great. Um, thank you so much. I, I think really we could have filled two hours or more. It's such an important topic, so essential. And even we can still learn so much uh, from uh, this session. So um, it's been great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to let you two go now, and I'm just going to remind the people where they can find our exclusive community content piece, which Francesca, Florian, mm -hmm. and myself created. It is a spreadsheet with an attendee journey. I'll show you in a second. 
for now, thank you very much, guys. Have a lovely rest of your day. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. It was perfect. Thank you so much. Let's keep that conversation going. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a great conversation. Like Oliver said there, we could talk about it forever. And yeah, anyone who has got questions, set it. Go join us in the Slack uh, community or like Flo said, LinkedIn, we're both really active. So we're there. Reach out. We'd love to hear from everyone and hope you enjoyed it. Fantastic. Bye. See Have you a good rest of the day.